No executive sponsor. No clear pain to solve. No urgency. No clear acceptance criteria. Haven't secured a commitment. Scope creep. No timelines defined. You as a sales team suck because you missed all of these. Before I get into each one of these in detail, let me quickly summarize what a POC is and what I mean by a failed POC. POCs are an important part of the sales process as they allow the customer to test and evaluate our product to see if it fits their needs, i.e. if it solves their pain. I made a whole video on POCs. Make sure you go back and watch it to understand how to plan and scope a POC. What is a failed POC? We as a sales engineers are super excited to work on POCs to help the customer understand the product and to get them really excited about our product or solution. And our job is to secure a technical win for the POC, meaning we make sure that those acceptance criteria for the POC are met. But even with a technical win, a POC might not materialize into a sales deal for a number of reasons. And running a POC that doesn't materialize into a sales deal is terrible for business. Just think about it. We have invested resources and time into working on a POC that didn't materialize into a sales deal at the end, which means that money is just going down the drain. And it's even worse. While we were working on this POC that didn't materialize into a deal, we might have been working into some more promising opportunity that, you know, could have brought us some revenue. Hey guys, my name is Sasha and I work as a senior sales engineer for a leading cloud software company. My god, this camera is heavy, I need to change my hand. I'm making these videos in my spare time to help you become better sales engineers. And you can help others too by subscribing to this channel and liking this video so the YouTube algorithm recommends this to other people too. Let's go deeper into the reasons why POCs fail. No executive sponsor. A sponsor is our ally on the customer side. They're usually like a senior executive responsible for the overall project where our product is going to be used. And they're invested because they will personally gain from our mutual success they will get promoted or their standing within the company will improve. How important is it to have an executive sponsor? Let me give you an example. One of the earliest POCs on recorded history has been done in the 1850s by the American Army. American Army formed something called Army Camel Corps. The idea was to use camels to transport military equipment across the deserts of New Mexico. And they thought camels are going to perform better than the mules, which they usually use. So they did a proof of concept. They imported a lot of camels from Egypt and they tried that out. It was a partial success. Camels were able to transport military equipment and were more sturdy than the mules. But eventually the POC was a failure because the mule lobby in the Congress was so strong that Congress declined to buy more camels. No clear pain to solve. We started a POC without understanding what our product should ultimately solve for the customer. If we don't know what we are solving for our customer with our product, we cannot effectively demonstrate that to the customer and they will not buy it. A customer will never buy any product without a pain that they have to solve with it. No urgency to buy. We went into a POC without actually knowing when the customer is planning to buy anything. Do they even have a budget in this fiscal year? Why do they have to do anything right now? What is going to happen if they don't do anything? If we don't have answers to these questions, we might be unpleasantly surprised when the POC is done and no deal happens afterwards. No clear success criteria. We didn't define the success criteria for the POC with the customer in advance. We are shooting against the moving target, we are chasing our tails, we will never reach the goal of this POC because the goal hasn't been defined in the first place. No secured commitment from everyone involved. Here's a typical example. We start the POC on a Monday, kick it off, and then on Tuesday customer comes back to us and says, you know what, we have some urgent things to deal with, so we need to stop this POC. Please give us a couple of days or a couple of weeks and then we'll continue. Scope creep. This is the attempt to change or increase the scope of the POC as it's already ongoing. People may come in from the customer side or even our side 
trying to add more things to prove in the PUC, scope creep can potentially lead to a paralysis of the PUC, not making any progress at all, just wasting our time and potentially never finishing it. And the customer may decide to give up on it completely. Open timelines. We started a PUC without previously agreeing with the customer on which date exactly the PUC should end. The customer didn't commit their resources for this POC indefinitely. Sooner or later, they'll take these people and put them on more urgent work. If our POC is not time boxed, it will never finish and the sales deal will never happen. And finally, number eight, we failed to see all these signals. We went naively into the POC, hoping that things will clarify during the POC execution and that there's going to be a happy end. But it's not gonna happen. Very likely this POC and this sales opportunity is doomed. We haven't done our homework as a sales team. We totally suck. For every successful POC there, a POC that leads to a sales deal, there's at least one other that failed. And we rarely hear about this at the town hall meetings. These sales teams are not praised as heroes. And nobody really wants to be reminded of a failure. So what can we as SEs do to make sure we don't run a POC that's in the end going to fail? Avoid POCs completely. Sounds counterintuitive, but just think about it. If you don't run a POC, it cannot fail. And there are some alternatives to running a POC and still being able to make the sales deal. One is running a demo. You probably have a standard demo already set up and running and ready to go. This might be enough to persuade a customer. Run a customized demo, something that resembles more closely the situation that the customer has, maybe with their or similar data as they have. It's a bit longer investment than a standard demo, but still way, way less risk than a POC. And then finally, there's another thing you can do. You can let the customer do what we call a customer-led trial. They use your free trial version of your software and most of the work is on them and you steer them and guide them by providing maybe hands-on workshops, documentation, useful links, tips and tricks. And this has a nice effect, nice learning effect on the customer as they really get their hands dirty and really get to know your product well. A deal never happens if there is no pain to solve, even if the customer wants to go into a POC. And this is on us to discover. We need to understand how exactly our product is going to address the pain that the customer has. As we do the discovery, there are a lot of questions we need to ask, but basically it comes down to three whys. If we understand the three whys, we can understand other things probably down the road better. Why do anything? Meaning what is the pain? Why do anything now? Meaning what is the urgency? And why do anything now with our product? Skin in the game. Skin in the game. Get everyone including your own sales team and people from your company supporting you and of course the customer to agree on the scope, on the timelines, on the acceptance criteria for the POC, cats, dogs, anyone who's going to be involved, resources, I mean network, hardware, software, anything that you will be needing in a POC to make it successful. And there's one more thing. Don't forget to agree on what's the next step. How does the purchase process continue after the PUC has been a success? Get them to commit to that too. Timelines. Define and stick to the timelines. PUCs are expensive. The longer they take, the more money they will cost. And that makes everybody nervous. I can imagine every day going on and this happens. Customers may start having doubts about the product, the ability to execute, Priorities can change and a quick and successful POC is also a testament to how easy to use our product or solution is, which is a success criteria in itself. Extreme ownership. Take over the ownership of POC and execute relentlessly. You are in the driver's seat. Over communicate so you avoid people making assumptions. Everybody has to be on the same page. Define the tasks, follow up on those tasks, chase people to see the progress. And if need be, escalate. Escalate as soon as some issues arise that you cannot solve yourself. First, talk to your sales team to agree on how to escalate. And if need be, escalate with the customer. That's it for today. I hope you like this video and it helps you win your next POC. Stay tuned for more content like this and stay healthy. Need to check where all that went. Don't do this if you have a dog. Shit. Ah, I look like I beat myself. No damage down the laptop though. <laughs> or the money. 
I think I lost money under the furniture.